Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Service Monster Podcast. I am your host, Joe Kowalski. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the Kanban board, multi-touch sales process, but some other ways you might be able to leverage that for your business flows as well, as well as some upcoming Kanban updates where we're going to be adding Kanban to some other areas. But before we do that, let's take care of some housekeeping. Adam, what do we got this week? So we are going to have a release next week, so I'm not going to go fully into it, but I wanted to mention two things to get kind of people excited about it, because one of these has been mentioned in Smug a lot. Right. Um, and that's the H- HTML issue for the payment link um, in mobile. It's showing the whole, you know, the HTML reference. and rather Foreign than, text. Yep. And so... That's that's fixed in the upcoming release, um, and they'll chat about it more next week on, on the show, but uh, on the podcast. But uh, yeah, that's that's a big one that's going to be out. Um, the other one is batch updating jobs is kind of the 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 main new feature that's going to be coming out, where you can close out those open work orders in batches, or you can make estimates to work orders in batches. It has plenty of warning screens. Like it's not something you can accidentally do unless right. you're really trying to sabotage yourself. But um, window cleaners and some of the larger kind of companies we work with, their office staff, I think, are going to be really excited for this because I get this a lot. If you're a window cleaner, you come back with you know a hundred invoices for that day, or I should say, open work orders for that day, and you want to sort through and make sure they're all done. Being able to do that all in one kind of batch update, you know, accomplishes that. Right. And there's also some other things coming down the road with the completion wizard and things like that. Right. So. Yep. Ethan completed that. That will be going into testing here shortly, but it won't make it for next week's build. Right. Yeah. Um, inventory control. Do you know if that's going in? Just to just very briefly touch on that. I don't think it's in the release, so I didn't see it in the in It's notes. big. Yeah. Yeah. And I know Sierra's uh, testing it. Speaking of Sierra, one thing I'd like to bring up, especially to the smug and uh, user community You guys have gotten kind of used to a nice little pulse. Uh, For a while, we were doing two-week releases. um, And uh, when we lost Alex, we moved to monthly releases so Sierra could manage the testing better before we were going to get her some help. Um, And we just found out last week that Sierra is leaving us. Um, She found a, a nice gig in uh, adjacent industry that she's excited about. So we were happy to be part of her journey for that while. And she really helped set us up with some testing platforms and um, general philosophies. I think we'll be around for quite a while. So um, sad to see her go, excited that she's moving on in her journey um, and what we were able to provide for each other when she was here. So it's gonna take us a minute to find a good replacement for testing. That means that production releases are going to slow down for a minute. So we're going to get this one out next week before she goes. She's doing some knowledge transfer um, testing and publishing, which we all know in bits and pieces, but I want to make sure everybody know knows, right, uh, what's going on there. So, and then we put out a job ad today. And so we'll be looking over the next week or two. Again, though, higher slow, right, guys? Got to find the right person. So it might take me a minute. And if that's true, then it's likely that the release after the one next week will be delayed for a few weeks. It won't affect the mobile pipeline, interestingly enough. Mobile is a self-contained team. Um, and, you know, I go and bug them, stand in front of their desk and, <laughs> and bother them uh, a couple times a week. Um, but for the most part, they're fairly well self-contained. So I don't think it's going to affect our mobile timelines, and it should just push one release back, what I'm hoping would be end up to be a few weeks. Yep. Um, and we have internal stuff, too. It's just going to go slower, right? So we already have people who could do these tasks, but you know I don't necessarily want to turn my engineers into testers. Right. That's a fast way to piss them off because <laughs> you know once you're in dev mode, you don't want to go back to testing. It's just not, not a thing. So so. Pay attention to that. You know, you'll you'll see those releases slow down a little bit for the next, let's say, quarter, uh, and then we should be able to move forward from there uh, with new talent. I think too, um, just to so if anyone does listen to that and they freak out, like if something there's like a critical issue or whatnot. It's not like we can't still release like a little hot fix. This is going to slow down that little kind of. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've been doing this for 16 years, right? right? And Sierra's been with us for maybe three, somewhere in that neighborhood. I think uh, two, two and a half. Yeah. 
something like that. Two. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, can we operate without her? Yes. Will it be a smooth? No, that's really what I'm saying. Right. Because it's a person dedicated to those builds and managing those releases, kind of keeping the developers on course and making sure they have track. So, I mean, that's stuff that I've been doing for 20 years. So right. It's not a thing. It's just they may run on a track and bang on my door and say, what do I do, Joe? I'm gonna go dig for trackers, man. Yep. <laughs> but Adam's going to be helping me with that, too. As I just recruited him like ten minutes ago, and uh, and and so maybe it won't be too bad. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have Chachi do more trainings, dude. Uh, yeah. No, that's uh, that's that's the goal right there. Um, I think I uh, wanted to bring something up too. You said from your last Vistage meeting. So. Yeah, and n- not my last Vistage meeting, but my last Vistage meeting. I'm not going anymore. So I was there for 14 months. Um, if you guys hadn't followed that journey, it's kind of a BNI group, but not. It's not networking for the purpose of networking in leads. Um, and we pay a ridiculous amount, like $1,500 a month for the privilege of being part of this group. It's all high end uh, business executives. You know, even with Service Monster, just under 3 million, I was a smallish fish in the room. Uh, most of these guys are pushing 20, 30 million dollar businesses. Um, so it was a privilege to hang out with them for a year and kind of, you know, um, have some of those painful conversations as executives or as CEOs, business owners that you wouldn't necessarily have with your employees. Things that keep you up at night, right? Is this really a big deal? And and um, just the psychology behind it. You know, it gets lonely being a business owner and your peer group usually in your local area, your friends aren't on that plane. Um, you know, when they go home at night, they're done. <laughs> it just doesn't exist that way for us. So rubbing shoulders with those guys for the last 14 months has been great. It's taught me a lot. Um, helped me refocus kind of introspectively some things that I've needed to work on. Sometimes I get too excited when I'm in a group of people that are high hitters and I have a tendency to just be like, Oh my God, let me melt your brain. Cause I want to extract as much as I can. Uh, and, uh, that's, I'm a little heavy handed sometimes. So that helped refine that general skill. Um, it was worth it. If you guys are thinking about something like that, it's definitely worth it. At least for a year, make a commitment to yourself to do it. I'm coming out because most of those guys aren't software companies and we run a ridiculously complex business. Most of their businesses are fairly straightforward and simple. Um, and the things that we were talking about over and over again are things that this company mastered a long time ago. Process, SOPs, building culture. And, of course, I put master in air quotes, right? Iterative cycles. We're never done. So we're always improving. We're always making things better. But compared to the restaurant owner or the sheetrock company, even if you're a $30 million sheetrock company, um, it's a pretty simple business model. Hang up sheetrock, bill for sheetrock, make sure you get paid, sell, rinse and repeat, <laughs> right? Now you got logistics and where's the sheetrock going to show up and uh, you can get, those flow charts can get big. Um, but the SaaS company didn't even exist 20 years ago, uh, software as a service and how we produce software and how we support our clients uh, what we create, how we publish, how we develop, how we sell, how we market. This is all brand new territory. So I wanted to see if I could find another group or make one. So I started calling Seattle SaaS CEOs. <laughs> hey, can I get like 10 minutes of your time? And so it hasn't been very effective yet, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to keep on it. And I'm just going to bug them until they're like, what kid, what do you want? But I'm hitting up hundred million dollar companies too, so I don't give a crap. Right. I'll I'll hit you unrelentlessly for six months just to show you that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you put that effort how in, today? how about today? How about today? When I was how a senior at uh, at the Western, I did a project on uh, F5 Industries. They're like uh, Cisco um, here locally in Seattle. You know, they were their their market share was ridiculous, and I was just doing you know project on it. I reached out to the, the CEO a couple of times and he responded like it was <laughs> pretty short and sweet. But, yeah, I mean, they, right. that's what they're there for. Sometimes you just got to try. right? That's right. And then keep trying and keep trying. And right. like, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this until you tell me to go away. So I have had some interesting conversations out of that. But, yeah, Vistage was my uh, long, my last meeting was yesterday. And so you probably won't hear me chatting about that anymore. 
Well, very nice. So I think with that, we can jump kind of into into smug here. Um, the first one I wanted to bring up was Mike talking about this this uh, bug that we were talking about right. last night. And this is kind of one of those incentives to kind of start moving on to six rather than be using a five. And so part of it is the bug is it's clearly tracking something that's in six. But let me describe what's happening here first. So job notifications. The system is built in the six kind of pipeline for these notifications to go out 24 hours, 48 hours before the job, whatever you guys want to have set up there. Text or email. Exactly. If you make the cancellation for the job in six, the whole system kind of shuts down. No muscle. No fuss. Out. Exactly. If you make the cancellation in five, whoop, whoop. five has no idea that this notification system even really exists. Whoop, whoop. Yep. And so that's where the bug itself is sort of rearing its head. And right. it's, it's really just because it was written for something that was in six. You know, this case just wasn't presented. People using kind of both versions wasn't really, I think. We have of, a tracker in for that, we, right? We sure do. Right. Because your your um, initial assertion was, hey, guys, stop using five. My assertion, of course, is let's make sure that shit's fixed. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. No, the, the tracker was actually put in a couple of days before that. Right. So, Which is amazing. And then you were able to pop in because I'm like, I never heard of this bug before. And you're like, hey, are you using both five and six? Why, yes. Yes, I have one person who still won't get to six. Um, And that's probably the scheduler. Probably, yeah. (laughs) This is kind of a new part of a report here. Chris asked um, about printing tech and admin notes. Uh, He had some things that were in there. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it was for insurance or what the purpose was. Well, the use case was a chargeback. Someone denied their credit card charge, and they wanted to be able to ship the notes as part of the package that we assemble when we dispute a dispute. Yep. Okay. Yep. I see it down here. In the, yep. So what Brenda did was she went in and she modified one of our reports, it's the uh, schedule printout report. And basically, if you have a note in either the tech or admin notes, it'll actually just show up in that little column now say, hey, there's notes here. Do I see notes? And when you click the note, opens up a separate page. All the notes are in there. It's dated. Everything is sort of indicated what order was tied to and whatnot. You can print that for anyone who sort of has a dispute or similar right. scenarios. And you can grab what you need out of there and, and move forward. So again, that was the schedule printout report um, for anyone who needs that scenario. Yeah, which was great because Chris reported on April 22nd and Brenda was able to get that published the two days later on the 24th, which is pretty awesome. Report technology is pretty slick because it allows us to train non-developers like Brenda. She's, I mean, she had to learn how to do some SQL and so forth. So it's not non-tech, but she's just a super bright customer support person and she likes to do this kind of stuff. So we trained her to do it and our platform allows her to make changes like this and just push them up to her report platform without having to wait for a release. So that's one thing that we do in our tech that a lot of our competitors don't really, they don't comprehend that problem yet even. (laughs) All right. So the next one came in from Eric. I like this one for a couple of reasons. Um, One, Dawn, uh, shout out. I know she listens to the podcast weekly, but Dawn actually jumped in. And uh, yes, hey, Dawn. she actually jumped in and gave them kind of some pointers. So we had that happen a few times this we week. Have, yes. Users supporting users, man. I love it. Um, so Eric's question was about having multiple emails on, on any account. Right. And we've definitely talked about contacts per account. Contacts, exactly. And so there's definitely probably some things there that maybe we want to take a look at. But I think a lot of people don't know you can put multiple emails in that field if you separate them by a semicolon. Yeah. And so Don just kind of hopped in and said, hey, you can actually put multiple emails on here. Just put the semicolon and a space between them. And that way, if you want to have your emails autofill that, remove the email addresses you don't want to use. Or it'll just send it to everybody. Or send it to everybody, yes. Right. So if you have 10 emails in there, be a little wary of that. Does that work on all marketing campaigns and everything too? Um, the marketing campaigns are just going to go to... You know what? I'll have to test. I don't yeah. want to tell people one way or the other. Yeah. That's, this is great for, you know, most stuff, pre-fill out forms and whatnot. And you got to go digging around. It'd be interesting to see what happens to David's uh, drip campaign. Yeah. 
That's a really good. Uh, that's really good. That's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Thinking about all those little things that. <laughs> Okay, so ending on that, uh, thank you as always to our smug users for the collaboration. Um, 